It was yet another positive holiday shortened week for gold and silver bulls. We have lots of interesting fresh data, news, and information to share with you here. Let's start with newly admitted government central bank gold bullion buying. It's going on still at a torrid pace. Central bank gold demand to start Q1 in 2023 is at the highest and fastest pace we have seen since at least 2010. Of course, last year in 2022, central bank gold buying was the largest amount since before World War II. And yet here we are starting this year with governments in net front-running financial institutions and asset portfolio managers who have barely begun allocating to precious metals like gold and certainly not silver, yet. Pretty much all of last year into this year, we've seen net ETF sell-offs and much of that unallocated gold bullion underlying getting sucked off to the east, be it for high-grade gold jewelry, for instance, investment demand for many major eastern central banks, as in massive gold bullion buying, Meanwhile, the gold spot price has just been climbing generally all the while over the last year and a quarter. China again announced this past month another purchase of official gold bullion, and that's five months in a row or a total of 120 metric tons or 3.85 million troy ounces of gold bullion added to the Chinese official gold reserve pile. Turning now to the house of fiat currency not storing value well cards, increasingly being called out by escalating gold spot prices. Gold in fiat Australian dollars cleared 3,000 an ounce this week. And note the old cup and handle breakout move from 2019, roughly 2020, until now in early April 2023. It's up nearly 67% over that time frame. And while the fiat Fed note price of gold this week cleared and closed above 2,000, and I'm looking forward to the breakout beyond 2,100 an ounce and similar performance for gold bulls stateside compared to down under soon enough. On the silver side of the Australian versus USA comparison here, you can see how well silver has been doing down under since 2020's low to the high of late, just over 37 an ounce in Aussie dollars. That's a just over 87% upside in a smattering of a few years. Let's turn now to the Indian market and hear from CNBC TV 18, Misha Gupta on how bullish bullion continues looking in one of the biggest bullion and high-grade jewelry markets in the world. Thank you for that. Well, I'm looking at the gold prices, which are trading at an all-time highs in the Indian markets. Remember, March, we did see that, and April has begun on a very positive note as well. But even more promising is the fact that you have the gold prices in the international markets now holding above $2,000 per ounce. Yesterday, at one point in time, you were trading at 2040 as well. Some profit-taking, but Asian markets have come back with some buying yet again. So one-year highs in the international markets and all-time highs almost inching to that 61,000 rupees per 10 grams in the Indian markets here right now. Well, if you look at the prices, we have seen uh, the, the global prices trade at a one-year highs. The international silver prices are trading at near one-year highs as well. And for the Indian markets, the silver prices have traded, are trading at 75,000 rupees per kg right now. So very strong gains coming in for this one as well. Overnight, we've seen gold gain up by 2%, silver by 5%. And in the last one month, gold has gained up by 9% and silver by 19%. So very strong gains continuing in case of precious metal prices. Well, the support clearly comes in from the fact that the U.S. Fed may slow the tightening cycle when they meet for the month of May. The markets do believe that uh, the weak economic data could do that. The U.S. ISM survey has shown the manufacturing activity slow for a fifth straight month in the U.S. there. The dollar index is trading at a two-month lows. And then you have investors seeing a probability of 57% that there would not be a rate hike in the month of May. And almost everybody seems to be buying gold right now. Take a look at what the hedge funds have done. They clearly are ditching the bearish bets and creating longs here. This is the latest CFTC data that has come in from COMEX and this is for the last week by the way where we have seen gold shorts decline and longs increase and that clearly has been supportive. So when you look at the net longs right now that is up by 99,000. That is the COMEX gold where the longs have increased and shorts have come off quite sharply. So this clearly is short covering that we are seeing in case of gold. A similar picture should come in for silver as well, where we have seen $3.5 billion worth of money in flow in gold in the previous week alone. So clearly, there is a lot of money coming out of various other asset classes and coming in for the precious metals. This is the silver chart for previous week. The longs have gone up, shorts down. So the net longs right now stand at 10,000 contracts there. Very bullish positions coming in. And it is not just the money managers. You also have uh, central banks, ETFs and retail buying as well. So the central bank gold buying in the first 
quarter of this year is the highest that you've seen since 2010. Remember last year you saw Central Bank buying the highest in 55 years? Now you don't think I would let Miss Manisha Gupta go onward repeating the World Gold Council misinformation and data reporting failure. Of course, I tweeted her, their error, so she knows going forward that 2022 was the largest amount of official gold bullion buying by government central banks since before World War II. Ms. Gupta responded to me, so she knows the facts going forward for her English-speaking Indian gold-interested audience. Back to our Indian gold silver queen. This year as well, the first quarter has been very, very strong. As I said, the best quarterly buying in 10 years. And this is what the central banks have done. 74 tons of buying in Jan, 52 tons in Feb, and March position also is expected to be positive. And not just bank, ETFs also are buying. So we have seen the positive inflow for the first time in 10 months come in for the ETFs as well. So when you look at the retail buying in US, those numbers are quite strong as well. The US Mint report that came in over the weekend tells you that the coin sales are the highest in March in a decade at 180. 5,000 ounces. So almost everybody from central banks to hedge funds to retail to ETFs seems to be buying gold, but not India. With the kind of all-time highs that we are seeing here, the Indian gold prices are trading at a discount of nearly $35 right now. So if the gold prices are trading at 2022, the Indian price is around $19.95 or so. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Very interesting. This is a long-term gold and silver monthly price chart now denominated in Fiat Federal Reserve notes or fiat US dollars. I'm personally expecting to see more stair-stepping on these charts to come throughout this decade, perhaps, and into the next. What I found interesting this week is that even artificial intelligence bots, when asked about building a defensive, recession-proof investment portfolio, are now suggesting a 20% allocation to bullion, mentioning a mix of gold, silver, and other precious metals, which probably means platinum bullion, to diversify one's allocated holdings. This AI bot is on to something, I think, given that CPM Group's backtesting of bullion versus U.S. bonds and S&P 500 from 1968 into 2020 suggested a 20 to 25 percent liquid net worth allocation to gold bullion over that time frame was the best risk to reward allocation percentage. Of course, there are time frames when either silver or platinum outperformed as well. Metals Focus had an interesting related publication or report this week concerning physical gold demand in the semiconductor manufacturing industry, which has been decentralizing and growing in size of late. Unbeknownst to most who have near no idea what precious items are used to create rapid oncoming future technologies like super quantum computing power or growing artificial intelligence applications, gold and other precious metals are irreplaceable in the electronics and semiconductor industry due to their unique elemental characteristics. So we have global central banks front running the gold trade, buying physical in mass quantities, and we're going to need physical precious metals if we want to get interplanetary someday in the future and perhaps build a better quality of life for the most going forward. All while readying the oncoming fiat central bank digital currency grid, which we will dig deeper into on the other side of this break. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss this insightful information about their plans for our futures. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates and share it with those who might find the information valuable. Also, be sure to enter our free Monster Box sweepstakes. Want to win 500 Silver Eagle coins just like this guy? Yeah, this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. I'm calling to you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Monster Box of 2022 Silver Eagles. Unbelievable. That is awesome. <laughs> so click the link below for your chance to win. Good luck to all of you out there who enter our free 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin giveaway sweepstakes. Again, here is a SDBullion.com company and order policy related update published two days ago, Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. It reads, the measures we put in place last week have begun to make an impact as our shipping team is putting out record numbers week over week. Last week, we shipped nearly 15,000 orders and significantly increased staffing for fulfillment activities. The temporary $500 order minimum threshold has resulted in fewer new orders placed, allowing us to more efficiently serve existing orders in the system and new orders that are able to be processed more efficiently. However, with gold inching toward new historic highs and the average investor showing more interest than ever in precious metals, 
the momentum will likely not slow down anytime soon. There is a significantly higher level of asset diversification occurring amongst the most prominent entities globally. As we currently stand, we hope to lower the $500 an ounce order minimum by the end of next week. Our focus will continue to be to deliver the highest degree of value for your physical precious metals needs, and any decision made will be to support that. Thank you again for your continued patience in this historic market. Sincerely, SD Bullion Executive Team. Both silver and gold markets traded positively this Easter week. The spot silver price in fiat US dollar terms rose to close around 25 an ounce bid. The spot gold price in fiat US dollar terms rose as well to close the week over the important 2000 an ounce level, which I maintain will inevitably prove to become a key long term price support level in the years upcoming. The spot gold silver ratio fell to close the week at 80. A quick personal heads up. First off, how do you like my new low cost DIY standing desk setup? You know, as much as I labor of love doing these SD bullion market updates, sitting for long hours, doing backbreaking editing is not going to work moving forward as rainy season down here is just around the corner. Standing helps alleviate some of that back pain. So here's how I'm going to look for my computer camera and my upcoming interview with Palisades Gold Radio on Monday next week. Look for that to drop by the following day. I presume that will be Tuesday. Now back to silver and gold related news for the week. Turkey continues to become a larger and larger player in the silver bullion refining game globally, having imported over 123 metric tons of silver bullion last month, March 2023. You might recall that in late summer, August 2021, I took a trip through Istanbul, the historic and major city of Turkey, and did a bit of on-ground reporting for you then. Well, I'm sorry to report to you that the price inflationary situation there has only gotten worse since I left. But the good news is, God willing, I plan on traveling through Istanbul again this coming July 2023 and I intend on taking you with me to the Grand Bazaar for some on-the-ground reporting of that world-famous gold and silver market firsthand. Stay tuned and look out for that this coming summer 2023. Now finally, to close this week, I want to draw your attentions away from the constant bricks end of the petrodollar headline hype yada yada fest that's been going on to the more important Bank for International Settlements project Inbridge, aka oncoming wholesale MCBDC payment settlement grid that will likely be foisted collectively on us, whether we like it or not. Let us take a gander of what the BIS and major central banks and commercial banks have been planning. The global economy has become more integrated, but cross-border payments have struggled to keep pace. International payments are typically made through a global network of correspondent banks. While critical to enable cross-border payments, they have also introduced pain points and friction. Each correspondent bank in the chain requires time to process the payment, repeating similar checks at each step. This results in high transaction costs, slow payments, and opaque transactions to the end users. Additionally, correspondent banks are paring back their networks, leading to a form of country financial exclusion. This creates a situation where some countries no longer have first tier access to the global financial system. The Bank for International Settlements Innovation Hub is exploring solutions for overcoming these limitations. The aim is to allow cross-border payments to be immediate, cheap, widely accessible, and settled in a secure medium. A possible solution would be a multiple central bank digital currency platform, or MCBDC. That is a technical platform that directly connects digital central bank money. Building on earlier CBDC prototypes, the BIS Innovation Hub and the four participating central banks joined forces to bring to life such a multi-CBDC platform named Embridge, which stands for Multiple CBDC Bridge. By providing a shared platform on which participants can conduct peer-to-peer -peer payments directly across jurisdictions using safe local central bank money, Embridge can tackle the pain points of international payments advance cross-border settlement in digital central bank money, and support diversification of currencies in cross-border transactions. 
Over the past year, the project team has moved Enbridge from a prototype to a pilot phase. From August 15th to September 23rd, a pilot focused on payments for international trade successfully took place on the Enbridge platform. This was the largest multi-CBDC pilot involving real value cross-border transactions among commercial banks from four different jurisdictions. Four central banks and five commercial banks from each jurisdiction for a total of 24 participants took part in the pilot, with the BIS Innovation Hub acting as a central coordinator. The pilot consisted of three basic transaction types. First, issuance and redemption of CBDC between central banks and their domestic commercial banks. Second, simple one-way cross-border payments between commercial banks. And third, cross-border atomic payment versus payment for foreign exchange between commercial banks. The pilot was conducted in three phases, with each phase seeing an addition of a new jurisdiction. A total of $12.1 million in all four CBDCs was issued onto the platform. This facilitated more than $22 million in cross-border payments and effects transactions made through over 160 transactions. The pilot demonstrated the platform's ability to transact real value payments in a real world setting. It enabled peer-to-peer -peer instant exchange of CBDCs to improve cross-border payment speed, efficiency, and reduce settlement risk, thereby confirming its potential. Equipped with the learnings from the pilot, the Enbridge project will continue towards a production-ready platform for cross-border payments. What this oncoming MCBDC grid means is that major government central banks and commercial banks will increasingly have the ability to trade and settle payments without fiat US dollars as the intermediary currency units. That is major bearish for secular fiat US dollar demand once implemented and increasingly utilized. That is also a key structural plank in a less fiat US dollar dominated hegemonic system and a move toward a more multipolar world order. Here is how the fiat British pound fared after it lost its dominant reserve currency status in 1930. You might need to pause and stare at this for a minute, but the black line that's going vertical, that's 1930. The blue line is the value of gold. Do you think future fiat US dollar history will rhyme if we give it enough time? In October 2018, the BIS basically published their next monetary system game plan in Bloomberg magazine. I took this cell phone pic because I knew it was their blueprint for our future. It was but one reason why we see government central banks currently scrambling to stack up more official gold bullion in record volumes of late. Now the good news here is that we still have some time remaining to be our very own central banks for ourselves and our long-term wealth by acquiring prudent precious metal allocations before bullion up and goes on a fordium and likely silver squeeze to gold squeeze on obtainium in size or in reasonable deliverable time frames. I hope you too are front running this as I most certainly have myself. That will be all for this important holiday shortened week and SD bullion market update. We wish you all a very happy Easter weekend with you and your loved ones. And as always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.